Hi everybody, welcome back to Lockdown Lessons Part 36. And with me today, I've got Paul Newman from Luma One. So firstly, I'll just say a big hello to you, Paul. Hi, Phil, thank you for having me aboard. No problem at all, looking forward to it. So yeah, so for those of the, for those people that are actually watching this that don't know you or don't know about Luma One, perhaps you could just explain a bit more about you and what you do with Luma One. Sure, so Luma One is a platform developed in Canada and uh, it's ostensibly a few things. It's a way of managing a lot of users. So if you want to take people in the big company on a learning journey, um, you can do that in multiple languages um, and you can do that in an interactive way. So it's a way of taking video and making it a lot more engaging using interactivity, uh, auto transcription, auto translation, and then potentially managing many videos and many, video, uh, many users. Fantastic. I was certainly impressed when you uh, gave me a quick demo on our last call. Uh, it was really interesting to find out how it, how it all works. So um, if we could cast our mind back, obviously, March 23rd last year, we went into lockdown and most of the businesses I've spoken to, in fact, all of the businesses I've spoken to have had challenges along the way. So what would you say your biggest challenge has been since the first lockdown came into place in March last year, Paul? Well, I've, so I wear two hats, Well, just to be clear. I've got an agency and uh, Luma One is uh, a startup which um, has been easier for me to manage and it's, it's kind of of its time right now. But the agency, you know, there are 10 of us in an office in London in, in March um, and our challenge was obviously continuing to work. Um, we couldn't get in there. Um, and then we had a cash flow challenge because of client basically yeah, I think a lot of people had um, the, the issue of like, well, what the hell is going on? Uh, we're not going to place any new orders. So some of our clients in the agency are quite big. They're on 90 day term. So if they hold off for three months, that means we're six months off new cash coming in. So we needed to bounce back loan. We shut down our office, um, which actually been fantastic. And um, we, we've now come out the other side. Um, and I think, um, what it means for a platform like Luma One is that, you know, a lot of people are thinking differently about how they communicate and do lots of things in business. So it provides opportunity. Fantastic. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it goes without saying everyone's had their issues. But in terms of the wins that you've actually experienced since we went into lockdown, um, what, what would you say your biggest wins have been, Paul? Well, I think the big win was learning to work virtually. Um, that has allowed us to think differently about how we recruit. So we've taken on a couple of people who we haven't met. Um, and, um, and I'm now working with a team in Canada and the Netherlands who I've never met. So it's not how I wanted to do business completely, but it does provide a lot of opportunity to, to meet people in a different way, like you and I are doing, um, and actually to really strengthen the team with the best and the brightest. Absolutely. So, so has that presented sort of any any issues or challenges to you in terms of recruiting people who you've never met before, and then subsequently working with them on a day to day basis? I think the look the real challenge is not the recruiting, um, but it hasn't been so far. Um, the challenge is with someone you haven't met, of knowing how she or he's getting on. You can see their work, um, and you can see the face that they put on in a Zoom meeting, uh, but actually, how are they really? Um, and if they're crucial to your team, um, and in a small team, everyone's crucial, right? Then how are they really? And it's, you know, there isn't, um, there isn't the, the, you know, with all, with everyone, I mean, I've got one guy that's been with me since he left college, you know, 12, 15 years ago, and we know each other very well. Um, and that relationship, is is very important to me, as are any relationship with with employees um, or contractors. So how do you how do you get past that virtual relationship? I, I don't think there is a good solution for that. No, it's um, I, I think from my point of view, um, there were there were businesses who because they didn't know how to operate virtually, um, they weren't communicating anywhere near enough to start off with. Um, you know, a lot of the conversations around an office, as we know, are ad hoc conversations, you overhear someone's phone call, you say, oh, that, that's a great idea, is it okay if I pinch that? 
those conversations never happen that everything needs to be scheduled into our diaries and i think that's something which is taking a bit of getting used to right it is and i think what we've learned um is that when you schedule we were scheduling get-togethers to have a cup of coffee um, and at the beginning it was all quite exciting and everyone had their experiences of COVID to share um, and you know their new way of working but after a while it became a bit staid and we kind of wondered why we were there so one of them had a great idea which is to turn that meeting into a creative showcase and that wasn't necessarily about our work in fact it was ideally not about work but what passion projects because everyone's got something in whether it's a football team it's what they do with the kids it's a hobby everyone's got a passion project and being able to talk about that meant that we could have a an interesting meeting where we learn about that person and we continue to do this um and it's not about work but it's also not about nothing so the meetings about nothing were be we became really hard and so we stopped doing them but meeting to say okay well I, my passion is taking photographs of old power stations you know um, that's actually really interesting when, when you when you start learning that about your colleague and they share some of their photography it's like wow okay that's that's great didn't know that you know so that's a, i think that's um and it's possible with a small team i don't know how scalable that is i have to say but i guess within even within a big company you have a small team of 10 people so um that's that's a that's a, a way forward i think absolutely doable so so when once everyone's back to a hundred percent normal which doesn't look like a million miles away right now um what changes have you uh, been enforced what, what changes have been enforced upon you during the last few lockdowns that you're actually thinking hmm, yeah i'm going to carry on with that and which ones are you saying well actually no there is there is going to be there are going to be some changes we are going to go back to some semblance of normality whatever that is we'll never go back so we we've closed the office um, it works for everyone. What we will do, um, and probably starting June now in the UK, is introduce a, a meetings culture or cultured meeting so that we meet uh, perhaps in a museum or gallery or um, you know a place where there's some sculptures outside or something. And if we do that once a month, um, again, it's not work it's about sharing uh, breaking bread together effectively um, so that's what we want to introduce so we'll save on the rent but that money will be spent um, admittedly less of it but on having really nice meetings where we can bring people together from around the country and spend a couple of hours together talking about something other than work but there's some visual stimulation i think that's a great idea um yeah, because I think otherwise you 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 know you have a regular meeting with someone. Usually there's a bit of small talk, whether it's a client or whether it's a staff member. You have some small talk and you, you get to know each other. Whereas on these types of calls, it's get straight to business. And yeah, that, that I, I totally agree with you. And I think once a month meeting that was a lovely idea, and uh, that's something I'm probably going to pinch off you actually, Paul. So you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. I think. Um, Thank you. You know, and it's a good way to go and spend money with businesses that need it, like whether it be that in a nice restaurant or an art gallery whatever great that's, that's a fantastic idea thank you so um what would you say you've learned about yourself over the last sort of uh 15 16 months would you say hmm. well i can't pause too long on zoom meetings to really answer that question generally it's a coaching question there phil which <laughs> i could do with a long pause to do absolutely i don't know i think um it's, I, I've learned to work in a room, which is kind of, you know, three by two meters, um, which I never thought I'd be doing. I've learned to be uh, at home a lot more. I've learned to work a lot more flexibly because I guess my, I'm not a nine to five guy. I'm more of a seven days a week, but only a few hours a day in different places. Um, I've got two young children, my wife works shifts. So my life is not, consistent in in those work hours um, and i've learned i guess that that works for me perhaps i didn't know that i think i had a much more traditional work life before this absolutely yeah and i you know but but it's a good opportunity for us really hasn't it been the, the last sort of 15 16 months we've we've got the opportunity 
okay, we've it's been forced upon us to an extent, but we've tried new new ways of working out, some of which we like and we say we're going to carry on with it, and some which we don't like, and we say we're going to change. But at least we've had that opportunity because if we'd have carried on doing what we always did, we might not have seen that there were different opportunities and different ways of working. So I think that's been really beneficial long term, even though there's been a bit of short term pain in many in many examples of people that I've been think, speaking to. You know, the, the thing is, and I, I can't claim that I said this first, but the 20s were always about digital transformation. There was always happening. AI is coming. Um, lots of you know, voice search is coming. Lots of lot, you know, the, the Internet of Things is coming. It's all coming. Um, and it's coming now, but it's been sped up. Digital transformation has been sped up by social transformation. Um, the social transformation has happened in 15 months, um, generally in most of the Western world and a lot of the rest of it. Um, and that has, whether you like it or not, sped up the process of digital transformation. The bit that's missing for me is um, obviously they're still burning coal to try and fix things. And, and I think that's the, the great opportunity that has been missed because we're still governed by lazy politicians globally. Yeah, I think I think you're right. It'd be, it would have been interesting to see what um, life would have looked like in, say, 10 years time if we hadn't had this these sort of 15, 16 months of experience before us and whether it would have taken us that long to get to where we are. And my thinking People is... We'll never know. Yeah, we, you're right. We'll never know. But, you know, it's a it's an interesting thought. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so so just coming back to coming back to what I was going to ask you next. So um, now we're actually sort of out of lockdown. Um, what's the first thing you're going to do now that you're actually allowed to do legally that you weren't allowed to do before? I'm not in a rush, honestly, Phil. Um, yeah, I had a I had a, a pint of bitter. Um, outside last week uh, which was it just tasted special um, for me um, I'm not there yet because the crucial thing for me as a family is getting my wife back to her home country uh, we were supposed to go back last year it was a big trip it didn't happen uh, we don't even know if it can happen now we're booked to go in August and um, that's when that has happened I will feel differently about it all until that happens um uh, it's you know there's, i'm not there yet taking it one day at a time like a lot of people right well i'm living a normal life i, I, I think this is my life now um, but actually the, the the kind of line in the sand between it's over is not going to be until we've got her home yeah absolutely and that, that'll be a lovely experience for her i'm assuming she's got family back there right exactly yeah she hasn't seen for four and a half years wow well, wow. it's, it's a difficult, uh, a difficult time for a lot of people that are, are experiencing that. So, uh, so yeah, so um, final two questions I've got for you, Paul. Um, so if anyone's watching this now, they want to find out more about you, more about Luma One, what types of people are you looking to meet? Would you like to get in contact with you? I think the, the easiest thanks for that opportunity, Phil, the easiest one is to say, have you got people to train? You know, are, are they, do they need training with health and safety with SOPs with compliance. Uh, that's that's it. That's the easiest thing for us to fix, because the Luma One platform is built to help people transition from however they were doing it to training now. Um, be that shooting something on a phone, bringing it, making a PowerPoint video, but making it all interactive and engaging and, and serving it to people, and knowing what they're thinking. So if you've got a workforce and they need to learn something, then maybe we can help. And you know that's most of us. Let's face it. Yeah, I, mean, I was I was very impressed with the. You, you sent me a couple of interactive training videos um, a couple of weeks back now that I, I took a look at, and I found them really engaging. So I can see how how um, how staff members and team members that that need training would actually could actually engage with them a heck of a lot better than just sitting in front of a uh, sixty seven slide PowerPoint presentation, shall we say? So. So that, that was that was great. I love that. Um, so um, for people that want to get in contact with you, then finally, how best can they reach you, Paul? Well, I think we're on LinkedIn now with this, aren't we? Um, Phil, that's where yeah. this is going. So uh, I'll just put my profile into the uh, into the chat, if you would. 
absolutely not a problem at all i'll make sure that happens um yeah i'll just uh, put that into the comments section below but for now thank you so much paul really appreciate your time and some great insights there for everyone that's watched and myself as well so thank you thanks for the opportunity take care bye-bye